Hey everyone, this is Brian from Madness and Motive. We are one week into the Karen Reed trial, and um, I wanted to kind of check in uh, today and show you five visuals I created based on what happened in the first four days of the trial. Um, so let's kind of hop into these right off the bat. So the first visual uh, reflects um, the judge's responses to objections from the prosecution and the defense. And the reason I wanted to count these, and actually the reason I wanted to do this entire exercise is, you know, to see what insights we could draw from this. Uh, I think this trial is extremely polarizing. Um, it's very emotional for people when they're watching it. Um, and I think it's a really interesting exercise to count things up put them in a visual and, you know, make a determination uh, on what you're seeing that way. And actually these pair really nicely with actually watching the trial or maybe even re-watching the trial to see if your initial interpretations uh, hold up. So anyway, let's just look at this. Basically how to read this is, you know, if you're looking at the prosecution side, you should imagine the prosecution has just raised an objection. And then these bars are how the judge responded. So prosecution objects and the judge sustains it 10 times, which is, you know, generally a positive reaction. It's like an agreement. Um, two times she allowed, so basically she disagreed with the objection and allowed, you know, something to proceed. Um, and then I don't have any sidebars for the prosecution. I didn't identify any from the footage um, where like the prosecution raised an objection and then uh, the judge called a sidebar. But let me know if um, I'm wrong on that. Uh, and then on the defense side, um, so when they object, seven times uh, sustained, four times allowed, and then I put five sidebars. There is a note down the bottom here that not all sidebars counted are associated with an objection. There were a couple of times where the defense was presenting evidence and the judge interrupted to call a sidebar. And so I counted those uh, here. What we're basically trying to do here is determine, you know, which side might have done better this week. And maybe um, if the judge is tending to side one way or the other, Although I do want to mention this early on that, you know, what these charts don't have is the context behind the responses. So there could be a very good reason why, you know, she sustained more for the prosecution than the defense. It, this is just simply how the numbers played out. And I do encourage you to actually watch the footage of the trial and draw your own conclusions with more context. Okay, and I'm actually glad I went through that caveat because you kind of need that mindset, especially when you're looking at this chart. I just sort of wanted to boil things down to like positive and negative responses from the judge. So on the prosecution side, when they raise an objection, um, 14 occasions saw her respond positively for the prosecution. And basically what I did here was I added up the 10 sustains or the 10 agreements that she had with the prosecution. And then the four times that the defense raised an objection and she allowed the prosecution to proceed. So that would be essentially 14 positive reactions and then uh, nine negative uh, for the prosecution. And obviously the defense is just like the exact inverse. And again, just a really basic way to look at things and see who might be performing better, um, see who might be getting the better outcomes. Um, and, you know, everyone's going to be different. So some might look at this and think that, um, you know, the judge is tending to lean one way or the other. And this is the final chart showing trial responses. Um, so essentially what this is showing is the rate of sustain and the rate of allowance from the judge uh, for each side. So in other words, when the prosecution objects, uh, out of all the objections that she sustained, 62% were for the in favor of the prosecution and 38% in favor of the defense. And this one was interesting to me. I know this trial is really, really emotional for people to watch. Um, and I totally get that. I'd say particularly for the side that believes Karen Reed is innocent. And, um, 
you know, I kind of do lean that way sometimes, uh, even though I try to be uh, objective, I try to be even, and I, I admittedly do waver back and forth on guilt or innocence. But at times when I was watching the trial, even I was getting frustrated with, you know, some of the responses from the judge. But on the sustained side, it's actually pretty even. And watching the trial, it felt dif different than this looks. And that's the whole point of an exercise like this, is to count things up, record instances, put it in a visual and look at it. Uh, it's a different thing to do that than it is to watch the trial. So um, anyways, yeah, things are a bit more even over here. Um, in terms of allowed, like when the defense objects, 80% um, of the time, um, the judge uh, went ahead and allowed um, for the prosecution. And then, um, you know, the inverse of that is 20% of the time. When the prosecution objects, uh, she allows it. Another thing I wanted to count is uh, the frequency of statements like, I don't recall, I don't remember, I don't know, those kind of things uh, from each of the witnesses from days one through four. And that's exactly what I have charted out here. So um, it's a basic table really and a heat map. And so uh, as you can see, I've got the witness name, I've got an image to kind of help you remember who it was and then how many times they gave negative recall to the prosecution questions, the defense questions. And then I wanted to total, uh, you know, all of the responses. Um, and yeah, so you can kind of see like some folks sort of emerge like, um, Officer Stephen Saraf, you can see that um, f f probably t about twice as many um, negative recall responses to the defense for a total of 17. And then we've got a couple of folks from the fire department um, with higher totals and definitely more of an imbalance, you know, toward the defense side here. Obviously, one outlier, if you watch the trial, you know. Um, there was kind of a tense exchange between Katie McLaughlin and the defense. And you can see a whole lot of, um, I don't recall, I don't remember, I don't know, uh, happening um, for a total of 53 times. Um, so quite a, quite a lot there. Now, what that means, that's up to you to interpret. Maybe you felt that she had so many instances because the defense just kept hammering home at the same question or the same kind of question that was perfectly reasonable to say, I can't recall to, um, you know, so th this doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Um, but again, that's why I'm sharing this stuff, because I want you to see things in a different way, maybe think about it in a different way and um, hear your thoughts in the comments. I mean, what do you think? Um, of this kind of imbalance. What do you make of it, if anything? This is basically the same thing, um, just another way to look at it. I just did a simple bar chart comparison for the prosecution and defense, negative recall frequency per witness again. Um, so you can see not much from the O'Keefe couple here. Um, there's Officer Seraf, and we've got some other folks. Um, there's the two fire department employees that kind of had a bit more than Seraph and more of an imbalance happening. And then, of course, we've got uh, Katie McLaughlin. Um, she's got the 46 responses to the defense. So I just wanted to show this, um, again, just to see if you make anything of this. Um, mountain out of a molehill, or is there something here? I'm really looking forward to hearing what people think and say in the comments. And that kind of takes care of the visuals. Just a short video to share those. I just kind of wanted to like get those out there into the world beyond just the Facebook thread that I uh, shared them on. YouTube's not getting me out in front of as many people uh, these days, um, probably because I've been terrible about posting. But if you do come across this video, I hope you liked those visuals. I'm going to be updating those every single week and checking in with a video, kind of like a a roundup at the end of the week. Let's chart things out. Let's see how they look. Let's see how week one compares to week two, to week three, that kind of thing. Um, I think as the weeks go by and we get more data, uh, this will only get more interesting. And I wanted to leave you with one other resource. I did a 
previous video about this, but I want to make sure you have it uh, if you don't. This is my character map of the Karen Reed case. It does not include all the players, but it's including uh, most of the you know primary characters in this whole crazy story. And I've got this linked in the description as well, just like all the other charts, if I forgot to mention that. Just go right to the video description and everything is right there for you to click and look at, or in this case, uh, you can go ahead and just download it. So this is, I think, where the link is going to take you, and you can just click this to download the image. And um, let's zoom in on this a little more so you can see it better. So basically, um, like I said, I've got all like pretty much the primary characters here. Got John O'Keefe and Karen Reed, her defense team, and oops, sorry, and her parents. And then I've got the woman who invited John to the party, Jen McCabe, her husband her friend, et cetera, et cetera. And it just all kind of connects down to the homeowner, uh, homeowners sorry, of 34 Fairview, which would be Brian and Nicole Albert. And then I've even got neighbors and, you know, brothers from the Canton PD. You know, everything is, is right here. Um, so that's uh, downloadable. And like I said, everything is linked uh, in the description. I hope you found that interesting. I hope it supplements all the other great coverage and content that's been happening on YouTube. The goal is for my little channel to fill in the gaps, bring you something new and interesting that you're not seeing anywhere else and giving you, you know, more to think about as it pertains to this crazy, likely once in a lifetime kind of case. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you're interested in more content like this, like I said, I'm going to be posting about the Karen Reed trial every single week with updated data, maybe more visuals. So uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and I hope you have a great day.